Check, check, check. Yeah, I think that's good. I think it's good. And I don't hear Greg. X3, X3, read all about it. Mike Gibbons back in Santa Monica. The Fitz dog in Venice Beach bringing you the news. Hmm. X3, X3. Hey, everybody. It's so funny because I watched the... uh, there's a great documentary on PBS about William Randolph Hearst. Holy oh, that shit. bastard. But it shows the newsies, the newsboys, and how he tried to crush them. They were making five cents a day, and they wanted six cents. And they were homeless. I mean, the newsies were essentially homeless boys yeah. who would sell newspapers for five cents a day. They wanted six, and that's they a struck. big. That's a 20% increase. I'm on her side. <laughs> And they struck, and he fucking crushed them. How? Um, he got scabs. He started, I forget how he did it, but uh, in the end, actually, he lost. In the end, the newsboys won. So they got their six cents a day to stand on fucking, can you imagine the exhaust coming out of the cars in the 1930s? Oh, the I know. The fucking raw petrol that you were breathing all day. No, in the cities, arguably, I think we're. I wonder if they were. They were more polluted at one point than they are now. But uh, yeah, I imagine it was really bad. You know, that reminds me. Uh, I was gonna joke that. How did he crush them? Uh, he put up little like uh, new, you know the newspaper boxes yeah, that you exactly. you know you put a, you put a nickel in and you get your newspaper. Yeah. And I saw something this week, which was you know some very liberal person. It might have been sadly. I, I I went on Facebook, which I try not to do at all. And I saw, like, don't use the automatic checkouts in the grocery stores. Like, Whole Foods is putting them in all their Whole Foods because that is putting people out of work. Obviously. What (laughs) technology, I mean, what technology do you think put more people out of work uh, as a whole? Like, toll booths, the, uh, the, the baskets at the toll booth? Yeah. First of all, it's got to be tough to have a job. I think Mike Donovan used to do this joke. He's like, it's got to be tough to have a job where you get displaced by a basket. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good, good point. Uh, yeah. What do I don't you know. think? What do you think put more people? I mean, uh, ATM machines. Well, I mean, I guess it all falls under the computer. Direct dial phones instead of having to go through an operator. Wow, you're going back away. Self-serve gas stations. Well, that except New Jersey. For some reason, New Jersey has that law, right? In Oregon, yeah. What's only up their, with that? Only their highly skilled technicians can handle that process. Yeah, that's um, weird. I uh, I used to pump gas at a gas station in uh, Yonkers, New York. Did you really? Yep. I did it for like six months in the summer. I think that's fucking... worse than the breathing in. That's worse than the newsies. Oh, yeah. yeah I remember when we would pull up, We were, the family car would pull up to gas stations. I would lower that window and just huff. I loved the smell. And you don't get it anymore because I guess maybe it's all, it's more sealed. I, I can't believe it would yeah, smell Yeah, they got different. that little condom on it now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's called a seal. And, uh... But I love the smell of gasoline. And uh, mm. uh, Chris Denman, our, our crack producer out of St. Louis, uh, just put up that uh, I used to do it on uh, it was on the Speed Channel. I used to host a game show. Do you remember this? I hosted I a game show called, uh, God, I can't remember what it was called. Um, but I used to, it was, it was produced by the same people that did Cash Cab. And I used to pop up at gas pumps while people were pumping their gas. Oh, pumped. It was called pumped. 
and oh, I would right. ask them trivia questions while they pumped their gas. And if they could answer them all before their tank was filled, then they won like seven dollars. It was not it was not a big budget show. <laughs> and we tried to do it in Staten Island. That was yeah. one of our stops. I would try not shooting there. hidden camera in Staten Island when people want to fight you the second you fuck with them in any way. <laughs> and then when you tell them that you're filming it. Half those people are in the witness protection program. They fucking come at the camera. Take, delete that fucking shit right now. <laughs> delete that shit. Th that's the show. <laughs> are you kidding me? The, this should just be a show, Staten Island Hidden Camera. Yeah. <laughs> it was so, and I remember there was a guy who pulled up. I was trying to ask him questions. He had a uh, he had a Trans Am, like an. I remember the IROX. Of course. When, so he so pulls up put a giant bird on the hood like a, yeah a drawing of, yeah so he pulls up in one of those and then he gets the squeegee for the windshield and he s begins to give his car a car wash with the squeegee the roof yeah. the doors the trunk he's fucking squeegeeing the whole thing and just pull it. <laughs> i've been guilty of that by the way i've been guilty no. of using i've been guilty of i take it out and uh, I look around and make sure I don't think anyone's seeing me. And then I go to town on a big bird poop, like on the hood of the car. Oh, yeah. Bird poop. I can see that. But he was yeah. doing every inch of his car. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. How is your mom? Mom's good. Thank you for asking. So you were uh, back in New York. Uh, what days? Uh, I was there from Sunday through Friday of uh, this week. And... Uh, my mom, uh, if people don't know, she had she had a pacemaker put in like six or seven months ago. They did it, and she did it in Florida. And me and my sister were begging her, do not. And I know your father had a heart. Your your dad got got his heart surgery in Florida, right? No, no, New York, New York. New yeah, York. we were like, do not get fucking heart surgery in Florida. So she does it, and they do it wrong. And they stick the wire. The pacemaker has a wire that goes into the tissue. They put it on the wrong valve of the heart. And this caused the this caused a lot of complications. And then she had a valve was leaking and she needed a heart bypass because one of the arteries was clogged. So they had to do the full fucking crack, crack the rib cage, open it up, go in. And when they did it, there was all these complications. And then they and then they had to that's when they realized the pacemaker was wrong. And then they redid it. God. And and then that was the and then when they redid it, they did that wrong. So they had to two days later have to go back in and do it again. So, and you know, and she's 79 years old. So this was a lot of trauma. She had two open hearts. Uh, the, the second one was not open heart, but it was through, you know, with a pacemaker, they go through like below your collarbone and they okay. go through a fucking vein into your heart. I can't even. Uh... It's crazy. And well, I'm, so, gl I'm glad, you know, I'm glad. Y we had a text chain. I texted you about it, and I thought maybe I went a little too far. You know, it was nice. I said <laughs> You're nice things, me, right? Huh? You're kidding me, right? Well, no. I go, I go. I said nice things, and you're like, "Thanks, man." And we talked about how it's hard to see your parents vulnerable. And you had mentioned she lost a lot of weight, and you're like, you know, I just hope you know she comes back. You know, like you know to what. And I'm like, and I, and the last text I wrote was, "She will get some pasta in that bitch." And then no, you didn't even give me a ha ha. You didn't give me, and I'm like ah. Uh, and the next day I'm like ah, uh, not even a exclamation point thing. Oh, the silence was deafening. <laughs> now I think I've ruined a lot of friendships by just I just peter out on text. I oh, I just don't reply. I'm worse than you. I'm worse than you. No no no. And I knew it didn't offend you, but um, I'm glad to hear she's on the mend. And it is tough, man. Are you kidding? That's like talk about invasive i told you my uncle john who was a character when my dad was going in my uncle john <laughs> tried to say something sensitive he's like uh i'm thinking of you kid like you know good luck he's like you know this, this is a biggie he's like you know i think they still use that wheel that cranks open your rib cage and my dad's like will you shut the fuck up <laughs> oh can i tell you the worst part i drove her and my sister lives about an hour from the city yeah. So I drove her I drove her in on Tuesday to get a follow up to the surgery and they had to x ray her chest to make sure there was no liquid in there. And so I'm waiting outside the x ray room and the nurse comes out and she goes, Okay, you can go in now. I open the door, I walk in, mom topless. Ah Luckily, 
not facing me, but at three quarter three quarters of an angle, where I saw a little side boob, just yeah. enough to fucking. Uh, I can't explain the emotional. I I don't know what happened. It was a very weird feeling. It's like the scene in The Shining where you're <laughs> hugging an old woman all of a sudden. Yeah, right. No. Oh my God! Thank God for many reasons. Well, two especially that you didn't see it from the front because now there's a third reason. Yeah. Which is the scar. I asked to see the scar because she had a gown on and she pulled. She, you know, covered her breasts obviously and showed me the scar. It's horrific. It's just. I mean, she's yeah. gonna have that for the rest of her life. Yeah, except it gets better. Like you know, whatever. I had the hip surgery, <clears throat> and. Scars are a lot better than they used to be. Yeah. And it'll, it'll, I mean, obviously it's going to be there, but uh, it'll heal. You saw it at its worst point. But anyway, shout out to Dr. Patel at Lenox Hill Hospital who did an amazing job. And uh, he, he's, re he's really the best. So uh, thank you to him. Also, shout out to my son who today, ready for this, is 21 years old. Wow. Yep. No, I remember. I remember it was this date. Yeah, I think we talked about that because I remember that October Radiohead 3rd. album came out that day. Yeah. Yeah. And he was he, born uh, on a he was born on a Tuesday. That I know that also. By the way, I love having a kid that was born in two thousand because no matter how bad of a father I am, I'll always know his age. Whatever the right. year is, that's his age. That's a pretty easy one. Hey, I was cleaning up uh some stuff here in the place and I uh I came across this and I did not put it in a frame. Found it in its frame. This is fun for listeners, but, and there it is. Wow. This is a headshot of Greg Fitzsimmons. It even says so. You signed it for me. Look what at did that. I write? You just signed it. You didn't even take the time or care to do anything else. And look at that head of hair on you. So maybe we put this on the website. Maybe I scan this and, uh, yeah. and send it. But look at you, kid. Look and at that. This is the craziest part. Think how many times I've moved with this. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> From New York. I'm going to go through frame. it. In a From frame. In a frame. From New York to my sister's spare bedroom in Mar Vista to a like cabin in Laurel Canyon to the house I bought in Laurel Canyon to an apartment in Santa Monica to a house to an apartment while I renovated the house back to the house to Matt Malloy's to uh, Marina Del Rey, and now to here. Wow. What is wrong with my life that this made the move every time? A framed picture of a 24-year-old Greg 24 year old. Greg 24 year old. Well, that, because I'm, I'm guessing. I think it's because you want, you, you, the, the action of actually throwing it out would seem a little sacrilegious. Taking it out right. of the frame and throwing it out, I can't imagine doing that. I know. Also, it got I've harder. I've got a picture of me, you, and Tom O'Neill with my old uh, super on uh, on Mulberry Street. Remember Gina? No, I, I went over your place street. for dinner, and it was out, and I thought you pulled the trick of, oh, Mike's coming over. Get out that photo. That photo has been on my desk <laughs> from Mulberry Street to Chelsea to another place in Chelsea to Santa Monica to Venice to another place in Venice, to a place in Mar Vista, to another place in Mar Vista, <laughs> back to my house in Venice. In a well, frame. I also couldn't throw that out, especially after I, I easily tossed your book in the garbage. So ah. that's, that's probably part of it. Uh, speaking of pictures, we put graphics on the website this past week. We have started the Christmas mug contest. It is now over. Thank you for your entries. We had hundreds and hundreds of people vote wow. on which of the 10 graphics. And thank you, Mike, for literally not weighing in after me asking you three times on what the I final like to keep it be. fresh for the listeners. So catch me up on everything. Okay. So we had, <laughs> so there were, uh, coming in at number one was what, what you're looking at over my shoulder, but actually uh, the Sunday Papers logo, but actually the one, it's got Blondie in the frame as well. What? That came in at number one. I don't like that. Well, that's what is it that, is. So the one that came in at number one, you have labeled number two? Yes. Got it. It was the, it was the second pick. Uh, the next one was the one with us in suits. There was like suits made out of newspaper. I like that one. That one's very slick. We look good in that one. Yeah. 
Number three was the, uh, us on a tandem bicycle. It's kind of a black and white no, silhouette. No, it was a drawing. Uh, and you know what? That might be the best for a mug. Could be. Yeah. But we got to go with the voters. No, so, I don't think so. Yeah, we also Kind of like get... Arizona. I think we can change the number of votes to get the outcome we want. You're right. Can yeah. you make a call to the Attorney General of uh, California? Oh, no. Is there going to be an audit of this uh, mug sitch? I'll tell you, I uh, I think we should storm the, the... Let's go to Sacramento. We were already in Sacramento. We could have stormed the Capitol while we were there. I know. Um, we got a, We want to give a shout-out. This is a note from Katie who said, Huge fan of all your pods. Big thanks for keeping us laughing and entertained during the pandemic. Me, my twin sister... Why does that sound sexy when I hear that? You know because you've you're watched You're porn. depraved. Yeah. And her fiance were quarantined together through the first crazy months of COVID and right, listened to Sunday get papers sexy. together every week. <laughs> this weekend my twin and her fiance are finally getting married. Boo, her fiance not sexy. Oh, there goes that. Oh no. He, he's a he's a wildland firefighter oh. who's been crazy busy all summer fighting fires across the country while my sister has been putting the wedding together. Is he in a calendar of firefighters that I could see? Go ahead. Or Tom O'Neill could see. Oh. You know that you know that um I have a firehouse around the corner from from where I live. Yes. And 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 of course Tom O'Neill lived next door to me. Yeah. And uh he would sit on his porch every day at four o'clock because that's when the firefighters would all go running with their shirts off around the block. They'd go on a run. And, and they'd, they'd come sold- back and they'd come back and Tom would be shirtless in jeans shorts with a hose <laughs> washing the fire truck. <laughs> Just sudsing himself up. <laughs> Village people playing. <laughs> anyway, I would love if you give them a shout out on papers and a good old Fitzdog and Gibbons Irish blessing. Uh-huh. Well, it, it, we could if you listed your sister's fucking name. All right. Katie's sister and Katie's brother-in-law. God bless you. Santa bless sounds you. like a good group. Marry a firefighter. They might not live long. But while they're alive, they're fucking men. They're manly men, you know? And they get like four or five days. Well, this guy doesn't. But eventually, when things are calmer, a firefighter, you know, they they go for 20, you know, 24-hour shifts or whatever, you know? And so it can be an okay life. Oh, God, I don't want to discredit. I'm, I'm trying to give shout-outs to firemen. I love firemen. But, uh, love firemen. Their schedule can be kind of cool where i mean it's hot and cold but you lose them for two solid days but then you was get that them back. a pun was it a pun it's hot and cold oh no i don't think that way I, that's why i don't watch sex in the city um or uh two broke girls remember that remember the fucking pun oh. festival that show was god yeah our song this week we want to give a shout out john allen two weeks in a row gave us a song and he showed his breadth I, I emailed it to you, Mike. Did you get a chance to listen to it? I listened to it? to it. It's very moody. I liked it. It is moody. <clears throat> Last I liked week's it was a, lot. a rocking one. This one was a moody yeah. one. Uh, the logo that we use this week is actually one we've used before because what? it's the winner of the contest. It's the winner of the coffee contest. Oh. And it's from GS Artworks. I think they're in Germany. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, wow. And I should put an asterisk on we're going to use that because I emailed him to see if we could use it, and he hasn't gotten back to me. (laughs) Oh, great. Well, I don't know if I want to use it. I don't even know which one we're talking about. Well, The one behind you? Well, yeah, but it's got Blondie in it as well. Oh, all right. Well, okay. Well, now we're getting into copyright situations. Yeah, now I'm checking the Google, uh, the email for the website and see if he got back to us. Meanwhile, correct. you want me to do a correction while you do that? Sure. Sea Poison, that's the name? I've never read corrections. I also love, I also, that's how it C. starts? Sea Poison. Before you get a correction on the correction, it's Sea Poison, not Poison. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just gave that, I, I think I just gave Poison a cool nickname. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know how you edit these things, but the first line is, I also love, <laughs> but that's a great thing. Furthermore, uh, I also well. Here's love- here's the thing, Mike. Uh, that you don't appreciate is that not only were you supposed to do all the stories this week, and you did maybe two, 
No, um, I did a lot. But also, I go into you the get emails in there and I also... edit them. I edit the emails. I don't. These are the people write fucking novels. I edit my I edit my stories, as you know. But I would have filled it. But all of a sudden, you're filling it with garbage stories. So what could I do? You don't like my stories? Sometimes I don't. All right. I also love how when Mike says something wrong, you confidently say, yes, I think you're right. <laughs> then when you say something wrong, Mike doesn't correct you because he's not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> I cor- but I corrected you last week. Uh, there's, I, did you put it in here? Yes, it is in there. It's down a little bit further. You talking about pig pen? Yes, exactly. I told you he wasn't the drummer. Hey now, what's up, Greg and Mike? Just wanted to chime uh-huh. in on the Pigpen debate. Uh, Ron Pigpen McKernan was one of the original founding members of the Grateful Dead, played the electric organ, harmonica, and sang vocals. Not the drums. Sorry, Greg, for the dead from 65 to 72. I believe he also came back. There were some shows in St. Louis. I was listening to the Dead channel on Sirius XM yesterday, and there was some shows from St. Louis years later that Pigpen came back and played on. Oh, no, no, maybe, obviously that's not right. Came back from the dead? Pigpen died in 1973 from a gastrointestinal hemorrhage that was most likely caused by his alcoholism. This unlike, is where I, I should not be Unlike other paying members attention. of the dead, he didn't like psychedelic drugs and preferred whiskey over everything else. Wow. Yep, and look what it got him. And the, so other, guess- the other tripping maniacs lived for a much longer time. Uh... Quinn Kenning wants to correct us by saying most people mispronounce camaraderie. You have said it twice in the last week on various podcasts. You need to do. Do I say camaraderie that often? I didn't I didn't realize that. Yeah, I guess so. You need to say the starting part as comma. The reason you say it without the second letter A is because your ear has picked it with whatever camaraderie. Who says camaraderie? No, I know. It's one of those you don't want to say the right way, like uh, bruschetta. Aluminium? I don't know. Is that the thing? Advertisement? Um, I love your podcast. British. Your style is honest and straightforward. I like the way you keep the conversation Uh-oh, you going. You, pr- you prop up Mike G and Allison I don't know. Rose. Oh, man, I got my better Wi-Fi going now. I don't know why I my told you that I was that. doing a, uh, a podcast with Kyle uh, Kinane one time, <laughs> and he said to me, you froze. And I was like, no, that's just me with my ADD staring off into space. He thought I froze. <laughs> no, I think I remember. I think you made that the promo. That was really funny. Um, yeah. So uh, the other the other correct. I'm not going to say camaraderie. No, I'm not. It sounds like a Boy George song. I'm not going to say it that way. Comma, 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 camaraderie. Yeah. Uh, sports no. correction. Camaraderie. This is from this year, <clears throat> Burner. Uh, did you fucking guys forget the St. Louis Rams reached the Super Bowl twice before they moved? Easy. They won Super Bowl 34 and lost Super Bowl 36, both classics. They were the greatest show on turf, featuring Hall of Famers Kurt Warner, Warner, Marshall Falk, and Isaac Bruce. I remember that Super Bowl, it was like the guy got to the like one-inch line or whatever. It was crazy. And um, it was like the last play of the game. It was nuts. I'm not remembering it exactly, obviously. But we weren't talking about that this here burner. We were talking about that they were not a good team when they moved and then so quickly got in the Super Bowl. Right. We weren't talking about the history of the fucking St. Louis Rams because uh, obviously Chris Denman is, is furiously tapping his keyboard right now because he lives in St. Louis. He said, you leave, you, you're leaving out Hall of Famer Orlando Pace. I vouch for you, too. You were talking about the last of their time here. Thank you. Thank you for vouching you say, for us, Chris. You never know that we pay him. Every, yeah, the check will clear. There it is. <clears throat> um, yeah, I remember Kurt Warner, of course, the quarterback who uh, I think he played for a couple years in the NFL and then couldn't get a job and had kids. And so he was bagging groceries at a fucking grocery store. And then they brought him back onto the Rams. And the first year back, he won the fucking Super Bowl with the Rams. This is where I don't fact check you live. Okay. All right. He's, he's fact checking me now. Went to the Arena League. Oh, he went to the Arena League. Yeah. Got a tryout with the Rams. Got a backup job. Starter got hurt. He took over. Won the Super Bowl. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was a sports, 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 sports. All right. How about here's another uh, correction. Um, David Hughes said the Dave's parody poster. Oh, uh, last week's poster, the parody of Dave, was done by me, David Hughes, but sent from my wife's email account. Hey, David, uh, what are you, you, you afraid your wife's going to get credit? I bet you have separate accounts. I bet you have separate checking accounts from your wife. Dave. I bet you. I bet you have two iPhones, one for all the side pieces. Right. Did you have a separate account with your wife, Mike, when you were married? Oh, what email? No, of uh, checking. Uh, well, no, we we had the one together, but I also had, uh, you know, my company. What do you mean, Which your is, company? No, like my S corp. You know, my yeah. you know that's overstating right. it a little, but my no, it is a corporation technically legally. What's the name so of your I corporation? Huh? What's the name of your corporation? It was, this is sad, always. It was New Boots, which was a Clash lyric, and I chose it uh, to remind myself never to sell out. Well, mission <laughs> unaccomplished. So did Ellen DeGeneres write the checks directly into uh, New I Boots? I got my New Boots account cast checks from the mind of Mencia, so uh. that didn't go so hot. So my new one, my new corporation is Gibbons Brothers. And I love that because I don't have a brother. But I thought if ever, like, uh, you know, I got notes, I'm like, yeah, let me discuss it with him. He's not, <laughs> I don't think he's going to like that, but let's see. <laughs> so it's That's Gibbons hilarious. Bros, like yeah. Warner Brothers. Um, and then we got uh, Obvious Irony wrote, guys, you read a story about two women putting caulk in another woman's ass. If one of you is not going to put in the effort to bring that joke home, we need to adjust the dosages. At least say caulk in the ass with a huge, horrible Boston accent. Obvious irony, we dropped the ball. We missed some good low-hanging fruit, and we apologize. I don't even remember that story. Yeah, remember there was a, uh, a mother and a daughter who were doing ass implants on women using fucking oh, household God. caulk? Oh, right, 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 right. Putting yeah. fucking cock in her ass. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. That's all he wanted. That's all he wanted. Uh, I may be doing that joke and others when you come see me at the Oxnard Improv, October 15th and 16th. That's up in California. San yeah, Francisco is. Punchline, also in California, November 4th through the 6th. In heavy negotiations with Mike Gibbons right now about whether he'll come up. We'll I, I can already podcast. tell you now that things are becoming more real. I will not be there because I will be freezing in Michigan at Parents Weekend oh. in their stadium getting COVID. Yeah. Nice. Right. 106,000 or whatever that stadium holds. I also just the big threw house. Up some, I threw up some dates for Boston and Portland coming up in I forget, December or January. Go to fitzdog.com and get your tickets now. Hey, I would go to Portland because my niece is at Oregon now. She's a freshman. Hey. Caroline. Oh, there we yeah. go. All right. I would do that. I'd also I'd also ski. We could stay at the Shining Hotel Ooh. on Mount Hood. Yeah. I'll tell you what else we can do. We can go to the uh, Heritage House. I forget what it's called. It's called the Something House. Uh, it's an all nude spa, and I went to it last time. Our our friend told us about it. Our friend Matt, and uh, you go in, you get a massage, and then you go into the spa, and it has a steam room, hot tub, dry sauna, and everybody's completely nude. Huh. It does, and it's it's co-ed. It's co-ed. I don't know. It sounds uncomfortable. I thought it would be, but I I had a blast. It was very freeing. I felt. Because, you know, like a lot of people, I don't feel great about my body. You know, I'm like uh, uh, skinny and pasty white, and I don't have a lot of hair. And I, my dick is abnormally large. <laughs> like, it's not in proportion with the rest of my body. <laughs> and But I decided to just go all in, and I went naked, and I walked around, and uh, I had a blast. Uh, is it weird if I walk around with an erection and still telling everyone, no, no, I'm a grower? <laughs> I, I told the you grower, once, just, just now, just walk in with the erection and go. Where's the growers section? I told you once to see if my uh, my therapist was paying attention. I thought a funny line to say would be, you know, I've never seen a flaccid penis. <laughs> 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 it 
made me laugh. If I was a therapist, I'd be like, wait, wait, what? I think I think we this is a breakthrough. I think we found some of the reasons you're like the way you are. Well, if I do go to the uh, to that place, I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some serious grooming, and I'm going to do it with the help of. You ready for this? Can't what wait. What a fucking beautiful tie into a sponsor, Manscaped. They've got this beautiful fourth generation performance package, and millions of men have used it. And right now, you can go to Manscaped.com for twenty percent off and free shipping with the code Papers. Um, look, the bottom line is. You got to groom. You got to groom. I was at my sister's house taking care of my mom, and my pubes are so long, I I had a pubic hair over the tip of my penis, and it split the pee, and I peed all over the place. And I thought— All right. A lot of questions. I don't know yeah. if in the middle of the ad is the time for this. Yeah. That, that really contradicts your, uh, your, 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 your big hog uh, story. Well, that- I was— I was in a pool. It was I was in a cold pool, and it was shrunken down. Oh, you the, peed in the pool. No, there was a there was a. You your pubes aren't really. They're that really long. long. They're really long, and so what I got home. What are you doing? What, what 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 are you doing? I got home on Friday, and I went to town because Manscaped sent me the 4.0 package, the the fourth generation package, and it's got. Um, this lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, a weed whacker. I did my ear and my nose hair. And then it's got the crop preserver ball deodorant, the crop reviver toner. And they also throw in some boxer briefs and a travel bag. You get all of this together. Dude, they sent it to me and it's awesome. And it's actually, this is what I was surprised at. It's really high quality. Cause I bought like one of those nose hair trimmers. The thing from like the CVS or it, how there's one moving part. It's yeah. just a thing that spins. How hard can it be? It always jams. It then doesn't go on. It, whatever it is, it's always flimsy. One of those is in there. And then never mind there, it's like I should start cutting my hair on my head with the with the trimmer that they have in this thing. And again, yeah, it's great. I, you know, I speak pretty candidly. You can tell when I'm telling the truth about one of our sponsors. They, this thing is really high quality, and I love it. Well, listen, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code PAPERS at manscapedped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code PAPERS at manscaped.com. Make your balls a priority this fall. Oh. Choose Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. You want to uh, read this next one, Mike? What is it? Well, I'll read it. Thank you. Simply Safe, they got a new wireless outdoor security camera. This is my favorite home security system, the uh, security company. U.S. News and World Report named them the best home security system of 2021. Uh, it's engineered with all the advanced tech and security features you want and need to help keep you and your family safe. So, uh, it's look, it's if, if you're worried about your family, I mean, I live in Venice Beach, California. They sent me this. They sent me this stuff. First of all, I set it up in 15 minutes and yep. you don't need to hardwire it. They've got uh, it, they've got a rechargeable battery. So you just stick it out there. It's got 1080 P HD resolution with an eight time zoom, 140 degree field of view. I mean, it's it's like you could shoot a fucking TV show on this thing. Dude, when you Bill? go on the neck when you go on the next door app, <clears throat> everyone's sharing their footage. You need one of these. It's crazy how many people, because of these really difficult times and stuff, and it's sad, but how many people are coming up just to scope your house or to steal anything. If you have a bike even locked up on your front yard here, and especially in Venice and stuff, it's gone. Right. So and it works at it works at night. It's got a built in spotlight with color night vision. Uh, it's also got, uh, as I said, the rechargeable batteries. Uh, this camera has it all integrates with your simply safe home security system, extending its protection to the outside together. It means every door, window, and room are protected. And now your property will be too. To learn more about the exciting new simply safe wireless outdoor security camera, visit simplysafe.com. That's S I M 
PLISafe.com slash papers. What's more, Simply Fi- Safe is celebrating this new camera by offering 20% off your entire new system and your first Done. month of monitoring service free when you enroll in interactive monitoring. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash papers. Okay, uh. this brings us to our new section, No Shit. Do you have a do you have a news oh Ah, there we go. Well we know we had a no shit section, I think, didn't we? Uh, it's our second week of doing it. Oh, no shit. Um smart so smartphone sensor can detect if you're high on marijuana. Assistant professor Sangwan Bay, nice Italian gentleman, previously created machine learning technology that can detect if someone has been binge drinking. The new AI system detects marijuana intoxication by examining smartphone user behavior before and after using cannabis. So the study, the authors tracked smartphone motion uh, sensors in the devices of volunteers who reported using cannabis. So, uh, all right, they already reported they're using cannabis. Anyway, they say they use cannabis at least twice a week. The team used over 100 features to track whether each participant was high. They included (laughs) GPS, noise, light, and activity trackers. The team then looked at smartphone data, uh, and they uh, reported they were either high or sober. And the people at Carnegie Mellon at Rutgers discovered the sensor could spot behavioral differences that predicted marijuana intoxication with up to 90% accuracy. Yeah, we detected that the phone was dropped in the toilet three times this week. (laughs) I know. How smart is this exactly? It doesn't sound that smart. Yeah. I mean, I could design it if it just look at what they're downloading. If 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 half baked or up in smoke or uh high maintenance. Yeah. We see yeah. Okay, so the, the, this is the AI. The AI is like, okay, he's taken zero steps. He made <laughs> he made three dra- he made three drafts of a text to his ex, and he's deleted all of them. He's listened to fish for three hours. Postmates just just delivered three pints of Ben and Jerry's peanut butter half baked, and he just Googled, "Is this permanent?" <laughs> I think he's high. Yeah, he listened to "Wish You Were Here" nine times. After listening to Sunday papers, <laughs> she just she just Googled, she just YouTubed how to cut your own bangs, and then she called nine one one. Yeah, yeah, maybe hi. I mean, are you kidding me? A phone in two seconds can tell. My Apple TV can tell you if I'm high. Yeah. Um, oh my God! All right, let's so do some dumb. front page. All right, front page, here we go. No shit preceded front page. Look at us. All right, I got to find my document again. Where are we? Oh, yeah. Uh, Justice Brett Kavanaugh tests positive for COVID-19. I put that in there. I guess I was going to write more about it. That's all I put in there. Well, I guess uh, I guess he can get treated for it uh, unless he waits longer than six weeks. Then... Uh... Then it's too late. Uh, one thing I do know, when he tested positive, I'm going to guess he cried like a bitch. <laughs> yeah. And got angry and yeah. screamed yeah. about how he caught it. You're right. You're right. And then he took the hydrochloroquine, but he did it through a beer bong. I didn't know babies could get COVID-19. <laughs> Is that... Is the CDC going to change everything now because this giant fucking baby just got COVID nineteen? <laughs> yeah, he's going to call. He's going to call Moon Dog, and Z Man and the Ace to come yeah. over and help him get better. Have his bros come over and fucking lift some weights in the garage. Maybe play golf. Uh, yeah. What a dick. Um. Anyway, yeah. Oh Jesus. And by the way, his wife and kids all tested negative for it because they they can't even be in the same room with the guy. No, it shows you how how fucking little he spends time with his family. 
And he said, that's such an indicator of what a shitty dad you are. If your kids don't get your COVID, you're not, you're not coaching them in little league. You're not reading be- books to them at bedtime. You just stand around in that robe yeah. all day trying to take women's right to fucking abort babies away. <laughs> that's Greg. That's not the way to win over <laughs> people to your side. Don't phrase it that way. Uh, but you know, we've talked about this before. There was that funny statistic on uh, on married couples and how shocking uh, the stat was on on one only one of them having it and not the other. Like it was oh, really. really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, do the study on people who are newly dating. 100% of yeah, the partners right, have it. Right, yeah. Um, All right. So a gay hairdresser oh. has agreed to a plea deal for participating in the Capitol insurrection on January 6th. He'll have a maximum sentence of six months in prison, even though he said on social media that his, tent, his intent was to incite, quote, a revolution like in 1776. That would be hard to do. Um, is another country running our country? I guess to him they are. Yeah, it doesn't really stand up to the whole metaphor police, does it? No. But gay hairdresser, th- wow, all right. I, I thought those guys wanted to party like it was 1999, not like it was 1776. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, he's, a, he's a hairdresser from New York who got some fame in 2018 for his hashtag walkaway organization that encouraged groups that usually vote for Democrats, like gays, to walk away from the Democratic Party and vote for Republicans. Um, Which Republicans fucking love it when they can bring a gay guy over or a black guy to their side, like it gives them a pass on their homophobia and their racism. It's um, It's like when American Idol got Steven Tyler to be a judge. It was like, no, 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 we're not just launching shit. Here's a guy from Aerosmith. Yeah. And then you go, mm, love in the elevator. <laughs> this guy must have a tough day looking at all these Republicans with their just boring hair parted on the side. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, oh, God, this is driving me. Can I just, can I just a little, a little gel, yeah. just something? Right. right. That's why oh, he likes man. 1776, because back then they had the bouffant hairdos and the the powdered tight, wigs, the powdered wigs, the tight three quarter length pants, the frilly shirts. Yeah, that was the look. Exactly the capri, yeah, that the pants right under the right under the knee, with the big socks and the buckle, big buckles on the shoes. And the men back then had beautifully defined calves because you really walked back in 1776. Right. You have or those you, like or you uh, had a horse. So you, you were wearing the, chaps? Yeah, guys with chaps. All right, I think we can move on. Giant Powerball jackpot got even bigger Friday. Estimated payout six hundred and thirty five million dollars. Still far less than the record one and a half billion dollar prize about five years ago. Chance of winning is one. In two hundred and ninety-two million. So you're saying I still have a chance? There's been thirty-nine drawings in a row without a grand prize winner. If you uh, take the cash option, then uh, out of six hundred thirty-five million, you get four hundred and fifty million, and then and then you pay taxes on that. So you'll probably walk away with about two fifty, two seventy-five. The odds of lightning, getting hit by lightning, are better than winning this. So you wonder, why do we stay indoors during lightning storms but not buy lotto tickets? <laughs> um, you know, lightning, I think, is way higher stat than that, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. The chances of getting hit by lightning— First of all, if I won the lottery, I don't think I would go redeem the ticket during a lightning storm because clearly you're beating the odds. You're on a roll. Don't book a flight right away. (laughs) Just sit back a little. Yeah. Do not fuck a Haitian guy up the ass. (laughs) Okay. All right. Uh, Speaking of good health, I have been trying so hard to cut down lately like in the morning i get up i want to eat a breakfast that's healthy i'm trying to cut down on carbs sugar all that crap 
and I realize like there's nothing that I can eat anymore. Huh? Record scratch. How about this? How about some Magic Spoon cereal? Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. That's 140 calories a serving. Keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb. They got a variety pack, four flavors. It's great. Co- yeah. Cocoa. It's fun. Fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. Yeah, the peanut butter was the one my favorite. But that's another way my phone can tell if I'm high when I reorder Magic Spoon. Oh, yeah, exactly. Because I'll eat that at <laughs> night. I mean, it's back to, by the way, remember in college and when you were a kid, like, I'm sorry, cereal at night was killer. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm back to that. Like, I'll binge something, and if it's this healthy, it's better than, like, throwing a ton of butter and popcorn kernels for my binging. I'll do this. Magic like, spoon. It brings back some childhood shit, like when it's late at night and you want some comfort food, and you yep. get out some of that uh, that cocoa. It tastes like, uh, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to list what cereals it tastes like, but I think you know which one I'm talking about. Oh, with yeah. Their cocoa. Yeah. Right. Also, I, I'm sure uh, Magic Spoon wouldn't want me to say this, but uh, it's not. It's a compliment. I also put it in ice cream. Hey, now. Oh, yeah. As a topping to ice cream, it's incredible. Go to magicspoon.com slash papers. Grab a variety pack and try it today. Be sure to use our promo code PAPERS at checkout to save $5 off your order. Done. A 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash papers and use the code papers to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. Awesome. Also sponsoring this episode, and I know this is a lot, but we forgot one last week, so we have uh, an extra one. Which Um, one? Stat Hero. It's the first ever da- daily fantasy sports book that puts the player in control and winning within reach. Um, I made some serious cash on Cincinnati the other night on Thursday Night start. Football, yeah. and uh, I made two hundred bucks. They, uh, you know, they, they the, the I was saw two quarterbacks of the future on Thursday night, even though they're both on shit teams, but. Um, so here's how it works. Stat Hero shows you their lineups and dares you to beat them. It's you versus the house in a head-to-head fantasy matchup. You name your stakes. Winner, take all. You have the advantage. Stat Hero is showing you their lineups ahead of time. No one else does it that way. You're in total control. Stat Hero is DFS the way it was meant to be, one-on-one. Play Stat Hero now and change the odds. Go to stathero.com slash papers. Sign up for free. And right now... You can get 100% bonus match on your first deposit uh, using done. code PAPERS. They're matching your first deposit. I mean, it would be kind of stupid not to do this. Go to stathero.com slash PAPERS. Enter promo code PAPERS for 100% first deposit match. Okay. Yeah. Local don't be news. Kind of, don't be kind of stupid. Go for this it. Is, this is the next door app section that Mike started a few weeks ago. No, so no, no. Have? That was local news. Then, uh, oh, we did no shit up top. Well, I don't know. Local news isn't always great, especially if you don't do it. Well, I would what? say that. I, I'm supposed it to find you know gems really on the next door app. Huh? Is when you don't put anything in there. That I feel like that holds this section back the most. All right, there's a lot of coyotes in the area. Have you been seeing those stories? No. So I would put your little dog brulee out more. Just leave her, just leave him out at night just for a, like ten, five minutes. Apparently that's all it takes. You said her. That's the thing about when you own a Lhasa Opso. And my daughter named him Lops, Las. His, he's, a, he's a Lhasa Opso, but we fucking hate him. And JoJo renamed him Lhasa Asshole last night. That's good. <laughs> But the name is also brulee. You na- you just said her. And uh, yeah. when you have a Las Opso, everybody just, it's a female dog, no matter what gender it is. Yeah. Well, the name didn't help also. Have you so, seen a coyote in Los Angeles? Oh, no, of course. Oh, yeah, I've seen coyotes, but I haven't seen them like on the streets because we live in a very 
basic, very intense urban area. But they are down here because they're uh, fires, first of all. But a lot of their natural environment has, you know, obviously been built on. And uh, so they're having a hard time. But, you know, they're on the golf course. I've seen them on the golf course. I've never seen them in the city, though. Yeah. But they're so, around. Yeah, they're up because the golf course is right by my old neighborhood. It's not yeah. far from here, but yeah. All right, we're doing entertainment? Let's do some entertainment. Speaking of wild animals, Shakira. She is a wild animal. Shakira says she was attacked by two wild boars while in Barcelona, Spain. The singer took to Instagram to explain the harrowing tale to her followers, saying the boars attacked her and stole her bag while she was in a park with her son. In 2016, police in Spain received 1,187 calls about hogs attacking dogs, running into cars, and holding up traffic. And the problem made it's headlines. It's like they're coyotes. Yeah, and, or, or like the little gypsy kids, those little animals. <laughs> <laughs> they made headlines in 2013 when a police officer attempted to shoot a wild boar but missed and accidentally hit his partner. <laughs> Oops. Excuse me. The, the number of boars has exploded across Europe, not just in Spain, with more than 10 million across the continent. Damn. Not only they can they not only can they be aggressive, but they can carry disease and they can survive in almost any environment, including cities where they can feed off garbage. Dude, if I was in Barcelona and I saw a wild boar coming down an alley, I would lose my shit. That's that would insane. be an in high Instagram alert. Selfie time. How do you but like how do they not exterminate them? How easy is it to just walk around with a gun and shoot fucking boars? Where are they going to the, hide? Well, at, tell the guy who shot his partner. It's pretty hard. Yeah, yeah, right. I know. I don't know why. Also, are they delicious? I would think. I had boar ribs a week and a half ago. No, you didn't. Yeah, wild boar ribs. When I was up in the Sierras after Sacramento, I was coming down. I spent the first night in Yosemite. Second night, I went up to Mono Hot Springs, and... I ate in this place and they had boar ribs and I, I had it. And there was there was only one other table with people at it because it's impossible to get to this location. And they were deer hunters. And I asked them a bunch of questions. And boy, I felt like they were men and I was less than because they had caught a beer. When do deer. you when do you not feel like that? That's true. And um, they had to go back up to get the hindquarters of the deer. So I asked, I overheard that. I asked, what's that all about? And they're like, it's too heavy to bring down the whole deer. So they oh. bury, well, they'll either hang it from a tree, but since they didn't see a lot of uh, bear scat, they buried it. And so they're going back up to get the hindquarters of the venison. Damn. Yeah. I should so, say deer. I guess it's not venison yet. Chris Denman just wrote some notes and then he deleted them about how uh, that they're as quick as deer, the boar. But huh. very nasty. He knows about this because of his um, survivalist groups. You know, when they they he's he's ready when it happens and those people start taking over. He's got all kinds of fucking survival techniques. Well, he also has his wild bear headdress that he'll put on. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> while he cloaks himself in the American flag or the um, Texas flag, maybe at this point. So also in entertainment this Poor week. Poor Shakira. Um, I saw, oh, Love Love on the Spectrum is back, my favorite series of last year. Oh, don't take ownership. I found it, and it's amazing. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to like it? Not really. Not after I, I rave about it. It's it, I, And they have my favorite guy back on it. Someone John? wrote in to tell us. No, Michael. John. Oh, Michael, right, right. If you missed the show, it's on Netflix. I is it out already? I think yeah. Although it is, I'm it starting is out. to yes, I've already watched two episodes, and I'm, I'm and I'm pacing myself. It's one of those shows where I'm like, I don't want to watch all of it at once because it'll be gone. And the guy who you knows who's really winning me over now is the guy who loves dinosaurs. Oh my, it just makes me want to be a better person. This show. Yep. Well, you can work with the best buddies. I'll put you in touch with Mark Wiley. We'll do it. Don't you have your bike event up uh, upstate uh, yeah. a little bit? The Getty. We do it at the uh, the the um, the Getty. San Simeon. Yeah, 
We also, but sometimes I will just go bowling. We'll take some buddies bowling if you want to nah. do that with us one week. No. Nah. <laughs> Uh, I saw the Many Saints of Newark last night. Uh, the did you Sopranos go to a prequel. theater? No, because you guys all pussed out. I put out. I put out. Here's the thing about living in L.A. It's really expensive. Um, the show business is fucking dying out. And what am I doing here? Why am I here? Oh, because I have all these friends that I can hang out with. So then I'll put out a text like, "Hey, who wants to go see the Many Saints of Newark?" On our text chain that has fucking 20 people on it, I get one reply from you saying, wow. And then, like, somebody says it sucks, and then that's it. It's over, and I'm at, I'm at home with my fucking wife watching it on the couch. <laughs> Why am I living here? Well, basically, you said, hey, does anyone want to go to a universally panned movie? Yeah. Still, it's so, Sopranos. How was it? Uh, well panned. Well done, critics. Oh. Although Joey Diaz, fantastic. Very funny. He's got a good juicy role in it. Are you serious? Joey yeah. Diaz is in this thing? Who, by the way, don't tell uh, David Chase that he's Cuban, but close enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's great in it. Uh, he made me laugh. He had some funny lines. Uh, Leslie Odom Jr. is fucking great. And uh, But you know what? It just It's like, I, I am I supposed to still be enamored with Italians? Right. I, do, do I have to find them charming that they go that they smoke a cigarette like this and they talk about gabagool? It's, I, I don't care. I don't find you interesting. I find you like racist. I find the, these these types of Italians is set in the 60s and 70s. They're just they're they're like the actors are playing an Italian. They're not playing a human being like the guy who played um, Dickie L- Moldesanti. He did it in such a cliched way. Mm -hmm. It just felt like, you know, the real Sopranos, they were so specific and they were so layered and deep. And I felt like this was like the female characters were all like the nagging wife, the hot goomon. Hey, let's go out with our goomons tonight, guys. Hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. I felt like uh, I'm not going to go. The critics all talked about how great uh, what's his name? Son is because they have to. Was he good? Gandolfini's son? No, he wasn't oh. good. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I know. Much. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get. Fuck. I'm gonna get shit for not saying that. But he wasn't good. He's a weird looking kid. Sounds Here. like I have to see it now. All right. I want to see this. It is the over, like overly romanticizing the Italian American. Yeah, I'm done. You know, with it's them. like they got that old. So what it is is this old world. Almost like dignity, this old world. There's a genteelness even to their to their violent ways and criminal ways. Uh, meets shitty, uh, like American city poor, and it's like this hybrid, where it's like they have their fucking gold. Like it's like they're trying to be dignified in a very undignified setting. Does that make sense? Like with the pinky, gold pinky rings and the jewelry and the fucking, the way they pronounce stuff, they try to put a little flair on their shitty yeah, slang. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, like they anyway. sit at the dinner table and they got on a, a guinea tea wife beater shirt, but they're eating a really Easy. good piece whoa, of- Whoa, whoa, Greg, trigger oh, warning. Oh, hey. Oh, he literally, he's talking to the, who, who's Tony, Tony Soprano as a child, and the kid says something and he goes- Oh, and it was so out of place. It right. used to work on The Sopranos. It did not work in the movie when he said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, does it show him as sensitive? Yes, it does. Oh, it does? Yes. I think okay, that's, good. that's not my criticism. It didn't show him as tough. It didn't show him as a potential leader. There was no, there was nothing powerful about the uh, character he was playing. He didn't have someone that did his dad die? Uh no. Not in the movie. Like sometimes I love those stories of the, you know, the reluctant hero, the guy who's for like the matrix, like the guy who's forced because of circumstances to step up when it's not his yeah. nature. Also in The Godfather with Michael. Yeah. Okay, I started watching I don't like superhero movies. First of all, I guess this one in theaters is supposed to be pretty entertaining venom maybe or something but uh 
There's one on Hulu from FX. FX is killing it, man. And it's called Why the Last Man. Have you heard of this? No. So this is why I liked it. I watched the pilot and a little bit of episode two. It's not like, I mean, because to me, all the Marvel movies are like, here's another 15-minute fight sequence where they're just flexing the technology, the yeah. CGI of how of this fight, which we already know the ending. And it's just like a million opportunities to go take a piss during these movies. So this one is in, I guess it's the origin story, but there's no... S origin of who? So it happens pretty soon. So this isn't a spoiler and it's in the title. Um, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, every thing with a Y chromosome dies. And not slowly like AIDS or, or COVID. It's like within seconds. Like you're a man, you have a Y chromosome, you're the president of the United States, all of a sudden you start coughing, you cough up blood, your face distorts like crazy, like you've been poisoned, and now you're dead on the ground with blood all around you. It all the male like rats, for... all the male rats, all the male dogs, anything with a Y chromosome dies. So the sounds funny like thing is, sounds like a metaphor is... for what's happening on college campuses these days. Anyway, go on. <laughs> so all of a sudden, they're not shy. I'm surprised, but everything breaks down because men run so many things. So they're like, all of a sudden, like they go through the 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 this is very early in the first episode they go through like the uh the succession of leaders like president vice president blah 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 and it's like oh my god okay it's you and it's a woman and all of a sudden like it's, well here's the report every major city is about to lose the electricity and water and all like e like everything is everything falls apart because men run all this stuff yeah yeah and all of a sudden cars start crashing into each other because only women are driving <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's all. Hilarious. Yeah, everything gets talked to death. There are no doers. <laughs> no, no, no. But anyway, <laughs> one dude, for no reason, survives. Gay. <laughs> you can still have the Y chromosome. Yeah. There were other people when people started dropping. I'm giving, I guess I'm giving the pilot away, but I think you know this going in. But there were some. I, I was like, well, why is that guy still alive? But I think they're trans. Ah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Interesting. Yeah, but it is called Why the Chromosome and then The Last Man. So that's the title. Damn, and, I, uh, would, I would invest heavily in the vibrator industry if that happened. Well, yeah. Also, so let's say there's one more. All right. So let's say the reverse happened, right? And there was one woman left. I mean- wouldn't she be locked up for breeding? Yes. So won't they try to do the same to this dude? I mean, it sounds like uh, all of a sudden he's like, sounds he's like, like one a of those locked 50s, up. He's like, like a Attack Sibian. of the Amazon women fantasy movies, you know, with this one guy on the island yeah. with all the Amazon women. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his dance card's going to be full. He's a breeder. All right, everyone's He's talking about Squid Game. I haven't seen it yet. Have you done, have you sampled it? No, should we watch it for next week? Yeah, let's watch Squid Game for next week. All right, that's everybody's assignment for Sunday papers on October 10th. We are going I don't to know review if it's good. Squid Game. I don't know if it's good. I know something that's not good. What? I sampled last night. I could only get through like eight minutes. John Stewart's new show. Oh, no shit. What's the format? Now, I've never been the, I should contextualize this. I've never been his hugest fan. The Daily Show was amazing. Don't get me wrong. But I don't know. There were some things like with this, you know, and I knew his stand up, and he is the nicest guy. He was so nice to me. I was in the same MTV building, and I had met Attel through you. Attel was his head writer. So when Attel and I would run into each other in the lobbies or the cafeteria, we'd always talk. And John was there. And then John was always would recognize me from that. Like So then when I worked at HBO, I went down to Miami. That's where he did his last hour for HBO. And he's like, hey, and like you know, came over, chatted me. Like, nicest guy. I don't know. I want you to watch it and, and see what you think. 
Well, here's the thing is I really thought The Daily Show was, I mean, it was seminal. It was a it was a new type of entertainment on television. Nobody had ever done the news in a satiric, funny way. I mean, Kilborn, Wait. Kilborn did, a, did, did a different show than Jon Stewart did. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, there was not necessarily news on HBO, but I will say, this is one of the times where I'm not spacing out and I'm correcting you, Britain had shows like this okay are we in britain no i'm I'm saying like there there wasn't groundbreaking television in that they had satirical news programs i guess when i say satirical and don't it, forget of course snl weekend update which also was very derivative of shows that existed like that all right go ahead. okay fair enough but i guess he brought a tone to it that i found to be much more dressed down that was much more um Maybe actually less satirical. Maybe what I agree maybe, with you. Maybe what Kilborn did was more satirical, and what Weekend Update was more satirical, and what John Stewart did was was much more of an op-ed piece. And he he and the show continued to transform into something that was truly in his voice. Well, and, what Kil yeah, what Kilborn did also Kilborn was not interested in news, but Kilborn and the writers, and I don't blame them, but. I think they picked lower hanging fruit. In other words, they would do goofy stories where Jon Stewart, you always knew it was going to be the top political story that week, whether it was funny or not. And they'd make it funny. And it was really informative. It was true. I have to admit it. It's where I got my news for a decade. I watched that show every fucking night. And then towards the end, I felt like it got very sanctimonious. I felt like it got very pedantic and preachy. And uh, too many long pauses, too much mugging. Yep. I didn't enjoy it by the end. Too much um, yelling also. And I think what happened was... I think you got too many Emmys. That's the problem. Well, I think also Colbert was such a character following him and was doing so well. And that was a little amped up and had more energy. I just noticed Jon Stewart was yelling a lot more towards the end of The Daily Show. Um, but uh, he's great. And this show was very disappointing. Yeah, I love Jon Stewart. So that's that's what's the format exactly? So he talks to you super low energy at the top. There's obviously it's a first episode. Is there so, an audience? Yes. And then um does very much a John Oliver. Like the the, the problem also is we all have John Oliver in the brain because the, the idea of this show is Jon Stewart takes deep dives on these issues. And his first issue, which is very close to his heart, is about the veterans. That that might have been the problem because I don't care about veterans. So maybe that was my disconnect. <laughs> um, no, no. But he so this is how it's different than John Oliver. It's John Oliver up top. But then he has a panel, which is more like, you know, he brings in the sort of uh, Bill Maher part of it. Um, anyway, watch it. See what you think. Uh, you know, listen, I, I will watch again. Because it, it's hard to judge a show on its first, you know. Very few shows have found their voice in the first show. and uh, But, yeah, it was interesting. So, all right. Worse, a worse piece of shit. Wow, did we're you, being very negative in our entertainment section. Did you today. finish Nine Perfect Strangers? S finish it. I couldn't, I couldn't find the remote fast enough. It was the biggest piece of shit ending ever. Uh, ending? How did you get that far? What what do you mean you couldn't find your remote? What well, what do you mean? I thought to turn it off. I fucking hated it. Oh, I didn't listen. I cut you off. Gotcha. It was it was like candy, so I kept watching it. Oh my god, what a piece of garbage. Yeah, I just felt like I Nicole Kidman's accent was just from some it was such a weird fucking bad choice that I felt like was inorganic and she never lived with comfortably and I felt like all the characters were What's his name? Was uh uh um Pat what Patrick? The guy from Boardwalk Empire. I don't know. Who? Oh, whatever. The guy with the accent. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know him, but I recognized him. Yeah. Anyway, I I, I thought it was one of these things where you got uh, actors were not being directed well. Oh, look at you. Yeah, I mean, I was going to tolerate her accent and all that because it's like the writer's room can't control that. Like, you know, maybe this is a, a well-written thing or whatever. What's-her-name's a good dramatic actress, though, um, you know. Oh, yeah, she's great. Mike and Molly. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's her name? Um, God, I'm 
I'm so bad with names. There's really something wrong with me. Melissa McCarthy. Melissa McCarthy. There it is. Thank you, Chris. Wrote, All I needed was the Emmy. Got me there. Yeah. Uh, what do we got? Oh, we Chappelle. Got a- Chappelle's thing drops this week. But we had some confusion we talked about at the top of the show before we recorded. There's a documentary, I believe, and a special. So I think I have that right. But that's coming out this week, so I'm psyched to see that. Okay, we'll talk about that next week. We got a message about last week. Wendy Benson said, I listened to the uh, papers this week. I do every week and followed Mike's instructions to listen to Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. Uh, And Shine On You, Crazy Diamond, was therapy for me. My childhood best friend lost her battle with addiction last night. And uh, the lyrics helped me cry out like I needed to, especially the beginning. Remember when you were young. You shone, you shone like the sun. Shine on you, crazy diamond. Now there's a look in your eyes like black holes in the sky. Shine on you, crazy diamond. It was so on point. Last week she posted a selfie and a statement about only being able to shine on when you learn to love yourself. Now her two daughters have no mother. Damn. Ooh. Well, Whoa, Wendy, Wendy. That, that was a, what an ending. Wow. Sorry, oh, Wendy. Wait, then she thanked us for being a bright spot in her earbuds. Yep. And she loves childish. She the podcast, too. Also. All right. Oh, well, Wendy, sorry about your loss. I'm glad yeah, you did tough. listen to it. Did you listen to... Dude, it wasn't just because I was high. That had a lot to do with it. Trust me, it enhances the experience. But I've gone down a Pink Floyd. It's... Listen to Dark Side of the Moon, but don't listen to Time, except the beginning of Time is amazing with the drums. Yeah. And, um, and Money. And it is... It is such, it's like an experimental, incredible album. And then I've been going, getting into Animals. I never, and my, I, I used to know all this stuff, but I'm revisiting it. Like as a teenager, it would be like in the dark room, headphones on, just disappearing into Animals and to, you know, into uh, Dark Side of the Moon. So I didn't realize Animals was after Wish You Were Here and, and, um, and Dark Side of the Moon. No, that's not true. It is. I no. had totally, yeah, like you, I had totally put animals before those two. I'm checking that right now because I don't think that's possible. Yeah, it is. But um, boy, just like do that this week, if anyone else. I mean, with the backup singers, the jazzy take, uh, like uh, it's really incredible. Uh, so, and like, you know, brain damage. By the way, listen to brain damage on Dark Side of the Moon. It's really very much they stole a chapter out of uh, Tommy by The Who. And all that you touch and all that you see. Yeah. It's that big. It's, it's almost opera. like hear me, yeah. feel me, see me. Yeah. Right. It's Animals. Really oh, yeah. Animals came out after Wish You Were Here and Dark Side of the Moon. Damn. Metal, 71. Obscured by Clouds, 72. Dark Side of the Moon, 73. Wish You Were Here, 75. Animals, 77. The Wall, 79. But what people don't understand is these guys were putting out music. Their first album was in 67. Such experimental stuff. Yeah. And um, I know this is the art of the obvious. Uh, it really is. I knew more about Pink Floyd when I was 17 than I do even as I'm sitting here now. Way more. Yeah. And um, but where did we get all our information? It. Now you can Google shit and find out so much information. Back then, I knew more about music, but I read Rolling Stone magazine every week, and I read the liner notes on my albums because albums, if kids don't know, came with usually like uh, information about who produced it, what the label was, and uh, listed the lyrics. But I don't know where I got all the trivia from that I had in my head about music. No, I think it was a lot of reading. And then you'd pick up a book and read. Also, this is what I'm not seeing today. And I'm generalizing, of course. I'm not seeing people interested in how their music heroes got that way. That's all, like, in other words, Led Zeppelin got me to all the blues guys. Yeah. You know? Right. And you know, going way back or, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever music you got into, you were like, who, who was this guy's hero? Right. Right. And you would then go down even before, you know, the internet, you would go down this wormhole of learning the influences and everything like Pink Floyd is named after like the two blues guys, you know? And like, so 
I knew that without the internet and you would just, you know, you would just try to find out as much as you could. Yeah. I'm kind of not seeing that. Now I also wonder, are these artists is like, you know, someone worth their salt, like whatever Latina star now that my kids listen to, whatever, are they talking about uh, Aretha Franklin? Are they talking about their influences? Like, well, that's what's kind of cool about uh, Lady Gaga, you know, working with Tony Bennett and a lot yeah. of these older musicians, and she seems to immerse herself in it. I think a lot of the, um, a lot of the duet albums that have come out over the last couple decades have been kind of cool because it's been uh, having the these big artists go back to their to their inspirations and actually give those some yeah. of these guys like a final boost in their careers as they get older. But you, you know, like, Neil you Diamond just, had to come back because of yeah. you know nods from younger artists. But you just see how music works that way. You know, it's right. like even if it's Megan the Train, whoever it is, you're like, oh, you loved even if it's as recent as Beyonce. It's like, but so you took that part, and this is how you made it your own. You know what I right, mean? Like right. anyway. Yeah. So this was interesting. Then this guy Chris wrote in, "Love the Fitz dog." Tell Mike to watch the making of which you were here. If he hasn't seen it, Sid Barrett came in Abbey Road during the making of which you were here, and a very and a very heavy guy came in with a shaved head. Oh, he, I think he wrote this wrong. So while they were making it in Abbey Road, my understanding is a guy with a shaved head and no eyebrows and very heavy came in. David Gilmore cried and said to Roger Waters, "Do you know who that is?" And he said, "It's Sid." So Sid was a founding member of Pink Floyd who was mentally ill and had to leave the band and that shine on your crazy diamond was written about him. Oh, and, uh, okay. And that's wow. a big chapter in Pink Floyd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, let's do some Florida man. Let's do it. Go for it. This really should be the lead story. Dwayne Chapman, better known by the name of his TV show, Dog the Bounty Hunter, visited oh my God. the Florida family home of Brian Laundry. He's our Florida. He's our Florida man this week. Laundry is a person of interest in his girlfriend. <laughs> person of interest is a nice way of describing somebody who you know murdered somebody. <laughs> We're kind of interested. Uh, Gabby Petito, she died. I don't know if you guys heard, but a white girl with blonde hair and blue eyes died. So uh, drop everything. Uh, yeah. he pull the reality TV personality pulled up to the Northport home of Christopher and Robert Laundrie around 4.30, knocked on the door. No one answered. When asked why he was there, I assume by a reporter, Chapman told a News Nation reporter, come on, you know, and implored the public to share tips by calling 833 tell dog. I thought that was your number. <laughs> Police are searching for Brian Laundry, who was last seen by his family September 14th. Her remains were found in Grand Teton National Park. Um, beautiful no, play, in, beautiful in place to be murdered. Now I see why you kept insisting you were in Montana last week when I kept saying that you were in Wyoming. I was not, I was not uh, digging a shallow grave. That was a new, that's a new phrase I came uh, across. They talked about like when they found her or whatever, and it was fresh dirt. Yeah. Fresh dirt is a very interesting phrase. Yeah. That could be a good band name also. Fresh dirt. Or yeah. a good book. Fresh dirt, like if you're going to, if you're going to write about your family or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. That's a fresh good dirt. one. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Boy, this story, man, it has got fucking legs. I think it's about to end. Now the dog, the bounty hunter, is on this, on this scene. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, yeah. All right, so this is why I didn't have a lot of stories this week. I took a deep dive on Dog the Bounty Hunter. This dude is, you know, I never paid attention to him. But by the way, you said Laundry's the Florida man. How Florida is Dog the Bounty Hunter, yeah. even if he's not from there? Like, when he drove over the border or landed in the airport, Florida must have been like, oh, our son is home. Just look at him. Yeah. Look at this guy. He's like, a, he's the poster child for Florida. Do you know he's only 5'7"? No shit. Yeah. Wow. Do you know he went to jail for murder? No. Yes, he did. 
He went to jail for murder for not that long because he was in the getaway car on a pot deal that went bad. And his buddy, my understanding is, killed the guy and shot him. But this is the part I want to talk about the most that I didn't realize. And it's awesome. In early October, Chapman gained negative public attention after a private phone conversation between him and his son. Uh, his son's Tucker. It was leaked to the media. The conversation was about the relationship his son was having with a black woman. During the recording, Chapkin, Chapman, this is, this is hysterical. Chapman can be heard saying, I don't care if she's a Mexican, a whore, or whatever. It's not because she's black. It's because we use the word N. So I'm just going to abbreviate N. Every time I say N, trust me, it's the full word. It's not because she's black. It's because we use the word N sometimes here. I'm not going to take a chance ever in life of losing everything I've worked for 30 years because some fucking N heard us say N and oh turned us in God. to the Inquirer magazine. Our career is over. I'm not taking that chance at all. Never in life. Never. Never, if Lissa, which is the dog's daughter, was dating a N, we would all say, fuck you. And you know that. If Lissa brought a black guy home, yada da, it's not that they're black. It's none of that. It's that we use the word N. We don't mean you fucking scum N without a soul. We don't mean that shit. But America would think we mean that. And we're not <laughs> taking a chance on losing everything we got wow. over a racial slur because our son goes out with a girl like that. I can't do that, Tucker. You can't expect Gary, Bonnie, and Cicely, all of them young kids, because I'm in love for seven months? Fuck that. So I'll help you get another job. But you cannot work here unless you break up with her and she's out of your life. I can't handle that shit. I can't get him in the parking lot trying to record us. I got that girl saying she's got a recorder. Once the tape is made public, A and E, blah, blah, blah. Wait, is this was this released on an audio? Was there audio available of him saying this? Ready? Once the tape was made public, a and &E announced it was suspending production of Chapman's TV series pending an investigation. On October 31st, 2007, Chapman issued a public apology, but on November 7th, uh, November 2nd, A&E announced it was nonetheless removing the show from their schedule for the foreseeable future. Now, in 2008, they brought the show back, but he did a giant mea culpa. He made no excuses, I guess, and he owned it and then got active in trying to help, you know, right all his wrongs. Damn. But I have never heard that that's his reason. Like, we're not, not that we're going to stop saying the word. Yeah. <laughs> because we don't mean it that way. You yeah. already don't mean it that way, according to him. But we're not going to stop saying it. We can't it. stop saying it. It's and who we're going to we be are. misunderstood. We wear cheap, cheap wraparound sunglasses and mullets, and we drive pickup trucks and all those things that you would never associate with racists. <laughs> Tucker, it's part of our brand. <laughs> You're not going to have us change our brand because you've fallen in love with a girl you've known seven months. And what about my after-dinner limericks? How am I going to... I don't know what else to rhyme things with besides the N-word. <laughs> it's insanity. It's pure insanity. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. I love it. Uh, let's do some international. We sure can. All right. Uh, museum wants take the money and run artists to pay back $84,000 for blank canvases. The Kunsten Museum <laughs> of Art in Alberg, Denmark. I've been there, Alberg. Alberg wow. Paid artist Johns Hanning $84,000 in advance to recreate two older sculptures. Instead, he kept the money without labor and called it conceptual art. Hanning, a 56-year-old living in Copenhagen, tabbed his art as as take the money and run, and simply uh, two blank whiteboard frames without anything on them. <laughs> Which, it reminded me of, I was working in Chicago one time, at, and there's, there was two 
two clubs in Chicago. Dove Davidoff, I don't know if you know him, this yeah. comedian. He was at the other club. So I called him up and I said, uh, I said, do you want to go to the Art Institute? It's my favorite museum in the country. So we met at the Art Institute and we got to the wing that has the modern stuff, like the, the you know, the postmodern abstract stuff. And we walk in and there's a velvet rope in a square around a blank canvas on the ground. And he got so fucking angry at the entire wing. He couldn't believe <laughs> these artists were getting millions of dollars for like the number nine painted in red on yeah. a tile. And so so he went, he went inside the velvet rope and he started walking around on the art and the guard came running over and screaming and he was screaming back at them. He's like, this is shit. This is a lie. This is. <laughs> Are you afraid I'll touch it and maybe spill something on it and make it art? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you should encourage people to bring coffee into this room. Right. That's art. I'm an artist also. But this brings up like, if you haven't seen it, everybody should watch Banksy. I think it's like takes over New York or Banksy in New York. And it was that month where every day he'd post like kind of a clue and a, and a picture of a piece of art that he essentially dropped somewhere in New York city in one of the five boroughs. And sometimes it was a little mural on a wall and it caused chaos. And then, but what he's doing is it really then questioned. And of course he had the famous one where, a guy set up a stand in like, you know, that little uh, flea market thing uh, off of uh, Columbus Circle. And there were, you know, the little stands and you could buy coffee mugs or whatever there. And it was real Banksy's. You, did you ever see that? No. Oh, and a woman came up and they were really cheap. None of them selling. And they were Banksy's. No and a woman shit. came up, a woman came up and paid. And I, I forget how much they were. Like, let's say they were $40 each. And she's like, oh, you know, uh, I need this for, like, my kid's room. And another guy bought one. I think he just bought them because the colors or sizes matched what he needed. Uh -huh. But they were immediately went from $40, like, to, you know, like, 700000 Yeah, yeah. Once they learned it was a Banksy or whatever. But he was obviously a commentary on, you know, the arbitrary nature right. and, and valuation of art. Right. Well, these, I'm wondering... If these are already worth more than 84000 because now they're notorious. Of course. You know, my next door neighbor, Danny, he, uh, he's Banksy's representative for the West Coast. Yeah. He, and so he, he, told he me has, that, yeah. I go in his house, he's got Banksy's all over his walls. He's got fucking, I shouldn't. <laughs> I know. What are you doing, dude? He's, he's, I shouldn't say this in public, right? Well, I don't know. Do you, does he have simple safe security on his house? <laughs> Simply safe. Sorry. <laughs> you should get that. Uh, in, magic Canada, in Canada, a man who has for months rallied, railed against Canadian vaccine and mask mandates gave out his phone number during a protest last week, repeating the digits into a microphone while telling a crowd he has nothing to hide. Chris Sakiochia, who goes by the name Chris Sky, told a crowd objecting to vaccine mandates on in Toronto on Saturday that unlike politicians, quote, I'm not afraid of anybody. Uh, so he said people can contact him who actually want to help the country. Two days and literally thousands of phone calls later, Socaccio, Socaccio took to Twitter to tell people to stop ringing his cell. <laughs> I gave my number out in Toronto and specifically said it was for people who either need to help or people who, more importantly, that have the resources to actually help make a difference. <laughs> it wasn't so people could call me every five seconds and ask me the exact same question that I've already answered a million times. <laughs> Sicaccia said he was unhappy with questions from, quote, lazy, weak people. And, I mean, I got to be oh. honest. Here's a guy who he made a mistake. He got caught up in the moment. He did something a little bit brash. And now it's kind of uncool that people are calling 416-400-9994 again and again and asking for Chris. I mean, to call one, you got to do the one because it's Canada, 416-400-9994, or even emailing them at chrissky83 at gmail.com and leaving them a message <laughs> there. Um, I did it. I did it right before we started taping. 
and I got a text back from him. I called him. Wait. Couldn't leave a message. It wasn't yeah. it wasn't taking messages. But then I got a text from the phone number I dialed with the sideways smiley face, you know, yeah. colon uh, half parentheses. Really? So I wrote to him. I said, hi, Chris. I have a pretty big podcast in Los Angeles called Sunday Papers. Do you have any interest in coming on for a 10-minute interview? We get a lot of downloads. Let me know. Thanks, Greg Fitzsimmons. So if he does call me, we'll try to get him on the show for next week. Huh, but in the I meantime, like if you guys out there can call him and say you're a fan of Sunday Papers, you'd love to hear him interviewed. And again, 416-400-9994. He should have a menu like press two if you were a lazy, weak person. <laughs> He should just make his life a little easier. He'll know, weed him out. I would press two. Uh, let's do some sports, Mike. We could do that. Sports, 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 sports. Here we go. All right. I happily, happily and joyfully lost $50 to you last week as the Rams beat Tampa Bay in L.A. That was yeah. fucking sweet. So today's Saturday. I'm going to the Rams game tomorrow. No, you're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dickie Egan, really great friend. Uh, you know Dickie. He, yeah. He has season tickets there, but he's going to the Awana, whatever the concert is. There's a concert. Yeah. So he gave me two. So Olivia and I are going to go down there. And. I'm taking the scooter, man, my Vespa, because nice. everyone has told me it's the biggest shit show traffic wise that you sit in a running car trying to leave for 50 to minutes to an hour. Jesus. It's like, no, it's apparently, and then it's like and, a divorce. And then Gubbins told us, even though he cuts the line in front of minorities and other people, <laughs> he like, you, I, I can't believe he didn't push people out of the way to get on the public bus. His was a nightmare odyssey of backtracking, changing locations. You can't meet an Uber. The whole it's it's a nightmare going to this thing. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well this this week they're playing uh oh wait, who are the Rams playing? Oh no, playing New this week? England is uh, sorry. Tampa Bay is in New England and everybody's gonna be watching. This is gonna be the biggest game of the week. It's uh, first Tampa time in Bay. my life I'm rooting for Belichick. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. They're seven-point favorites, Tampa Bay, and I think they are going to fucking destroy the Patriots. Wow. Well, destroy. there's a lot of incentive on both sides. Yes. But so that line may move because I read a headline today. I think Gronkowski's not making the trip. He got hit in the ribs pretty hard last week. Oh, he did? Well, he doesn't wear rib protectors for some reason, even though he's a wide receiver, which is fucking... Or is he a tight end? No, he has to be a tight end. Yeah, he's size. a tight end. Uh, yeah. So, But, I mean, the fact that he, you know, is running across the field and looking over his shoulder for a pass while fucking 250-pound guys oh. drive their shoulders into... How would you yeah. not wear chest, a chest protector? So, yeah. He, yeah, he got racked up. He went into the tent last week. So, yeah, I'm not surprised. All right, so we're letting it ride this week. Uh, yeah, this will be interesting it, at New England. A lot yeah. going on, a lot going on there. All right, another sports story. The NCAA will allow its women's college basketball tournament to use the phrase March Madness, which was previously restricted to the men's tournament. Hmm. I, I think up till now, the women's tournament was called Meh Madness. Like meh. <laughs> Or March, March Meh-ness. That's it. March M-E-H-ness. March Meh, Meh-ness. Um, March, March to the exits, madness. Maybe March Blandness? I don't know. March the back, change to, your, announced March Wednesday, back to your dorm. The change announced Wednesday was a response to widespread criticism and a lawsuit that the NCAA had shortchanged its women's tournament for years, building up a gender divide within college sports that hindered the growth of women's basketball. The report uh, was prepared by the fir a firm of civil rights lawyer, Roberta A. Kaplan, and she said 
They use the term March Madness. The use of the term March Madness has long been one of the most visible differences between the men's and women's tournaments. Oh, really, oh, Roberta? Really? That's the most visible difference? <laughs> How about there hasn't been a dunk in women's, in women's college basketball in seven years? That's pretty visible. They, they just the had one that- recently, but there was a seven-year drought where there wasn't one dunk. Also, you know what other some visible differences? The women's basketball is smaller. It's an inch smaller. And the three-point line is a foot closer to the rim. And the ball is multicolored. It's like, what are you, the Harlem Globetrotters? Get a fucking orange ball. If you want March Madness, get an orange ball. Grow <laughs> Dude, up. Wait, are you sure? Is it a different color? Yeah, they have different colors on it. Oh, I don't know. I didn't know that. All right. But, uh, yeah. No, there's a lot of, anyway, who knows? You know what there is? There's a lot more rebounds in women's, so that's exciting. And now I understand I might not that, be correct with that. I don't know the stats. I understand that they're not allowing crowds still to come to the women's games. Oh, no, that's just what it looks like. <laughs> well, I've talked to you about, yeah, the when we, at Norm, uh, of course, he loved this topic, but when we truly and earnestly Googled, we wanted to see, uh, how many, how many triple doubles? Like Norm was interested, and he's like, "Who's like stand out, like players and all that?" So we Google WNBA triple doubles, and Google goes, "Did you mean NBA triple doubles?" <laughs> so we organically developed the comedy bit. Oh, Google! Google. Yeah. Uh, all righty. Jews. What? Israeli soccer Sugar. fans who came to support their team as it took on a German side at Berlin Stadium, at a Berlin Stadium built by Adolf Hitler's Nazi regime for the 1936 Olympics, were subjected to anti-Semitic abuse. The game was the first time an Israeli team had played at Berlin's Olympic Stadium, and the abuse directed at the Jewish fans drew an immediate backlash. What, it, what happened to well, well, of uh, course I can believe it. Are you kidding me? In the mixed me? block, we, they were threatened by union fans, pelted with beer, and insulted as, quote, shitty Jews, among other things. All right, hold on. Is that anti-Semitic? It seems weird if you're, by definition, saying there are good Jews because <laughs> right. you're singling out shitty Jews. Yeah, maybe it's these specific Jews that they were giving a hard time and not Jews altogether. Maybe they were shitty Jews. Maybe the chance were, you're better than that, you shitty Jews. Yeah, yeah. They're just trying to help themselves actualize. Okay. One union fan reportedly tried to set a female Haifa supporter's Israeli flag on fire, but was prevented from doing so by civilian security staff. Oh. Is that anti-Semitic? <laughs> Don't they try to burn? I'm not, I'm not even joking. Don't they try to burn every opposition's flag? Probably. It's not, this isn't Jew specific. In this game, it is. Go ahead. Well, it's not like you had to, I don't know who won the game. I got to guess, uh, that's pretty distracting. I got to well, guess the Germans won that one. Here's my point. Again. I think there was worse anti Semitism than this. I think this article did a bad job of gathering the examples. But I do know this. I mean, get in line. Are you kidding me how racist the soccer fans are over there? There was huge problems, weren't there, with Italy doing uh, um, racist things towards the black players? Oh, yeah, they, they throw th- bananas at the black players. Yeah. Uh, was it Was it Italy? Who, not they, just Italy, they, but I think the And they got reprimanded. The Dutch, the Polish, the Italian. There's a lot of, let's just shut down Europe. I'm done with it. Europe did a lot of bad things, and they're not showing any remorse. Fuck them. Let's shut down Europe. It's been a long time. You know what what world wars are? They're reset buttons. It's been a long time since they're... That's what we're learning. Look at at our country. Yeah. Honestly, what the hell is going on? People want to revolt. Gay hairdressers. When the gay hairdressers start getting involved, that's when you know shit's hitting the fan. Anyway, shitty Jews to me does not, I'm sure they experience worse than that, but this article only picked that one. (laughs) Shitty Jews. You know who used the word shitty Jews, the phrase shitty Jews a lot? Oh. Take one guess. Good Jews? 
Jesus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesus hated, and I'm using the word accurately, hated two things the most, the Romans and the shitty Jews who got in bed with Romans to enslave the other Jews. Right. And by, by doing that old trick of like giving them land that they couldn't possibly farm and they default on the loan and then they take over the land and all of a sudden all these good Jews or poor Jews were enslaved by rich Jews via the uh, law of uh, Rome. Anyway, there you go. Oh look, oh, look who got Zealot on his audio book. I loved Zealot. I don't need any more sources. I just like one historical source and then I spread it like wildfire. Speaking of which, let's do some science. Got it. You ready to get blinded? Let's go. Okay. Now, this is kind of an interesting story. A woman has filed a lawsuit alleging medical malpractice after discovering her gynecologist she'd been seeing for nine years was her biological father. Ugh. Uh, She was conceived via artificial insemination, never knew her biological father, but knew her gynecologist, Morris Wartman, I would never see a gynecologist named Wartman. Put, I yeah. think he had a, he's putting his fingers inside. Oh my again. God! It's literally Wartman. Yeah. Yeah. Oh uh, wow! All right. He facilitated the artificial impregnation of her mother. She knew her gynecologist got her mother pregnant. Hellquist family is said to have been said to have believed the insemination involved the sperm of a medical student. But during an appointment in April, Hellquist began to wonder whether Wartman could be her real dad. Probably because he was holding both ankles in one hand and wiping down from the vagina to the asshole as if he was changing her diaper. (laughs) (laughs) Why is he singing me lullabies? I'm 28 years old. What the fuck? Why are you wiping me? So uh, during an ultrasound, he asked her to take off her mask and invited his wife into the room to meet Hellquist so she could look at her features. The doctor then allegedly said, you're really a good kid. Such a good kid. Was he talking to the vagina? He was talking with the vagina like a puppet. (laughs) Hellquist is said to have been in shock and disbelief that he would continue to treat her, a gynecologist, as if she were his biological daughter. Uh, The mother decided to, whatever. I mean, that's fucking crazy. Why is he staring at his daughter's insides like that? First of all, right, it's, you're not, are you not allowed? But some doctors treat their kids, right? Pediatricians? Or isn't it, or is it unethical? Um, I think it's unethical. I don't think you're supposed to treat family members, and certainly you're not supposed to see ever your daughter's vagina. Or breasts. I don't know. Could a doctor make an argument that, you know, you could? Hey, I, saw, I saw my my mom's tits this week, so who knows? Anything's possible. I know. And imagine if you were a doctor. You probably wouldn't have even talked about it. Ugh. You probably would have given her an exam. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, maybe give her a heads up. But also, that's how she finds out. If I, if I found out... Uh, I was adopted. The last thing I'd want is my feet in stirrups <laughs> with no pants on. Yeah. You just mean in general? Oh, you're my mom? You know, like, let's say I'm getting my, uh, you know, I'm getting snipped down there. Yeah. Uh, so my legs are spread. They're in, because I had this happen. My legs are spread. They're basically in stirrups, and they are going into my sack to clip and cauterize and pinch off my tubes. And my mom's doing that? Yeah. It's kind of hot. I, th- I can see a mother doing it to a son easier than a, f- than a father doing it to a daughter. Same. So why do we think that? Because women aren't perverts. Well, okay. But let's say this guy's wholesome as, as anything. Yeah. Like, let's say it's even accidental, right? I-, I think we still feel the same way that there's a double standard. Yeah. Okay, why? Because the vagina is such a disgusting mess. It is. I mean, it's a gland. It's a it's a pustuous gland, <laughs> and the penis is just like a. It's just a piece of meat. It's got skin around it. It's not. It's not trying to show you inside of itself. 
yeah, there's something more intimate, but is that our brainwashed minds? That I think there's something more sexually intimate about a vagina. Part of it is I put vaginas up on pedestals where you and I just think of our junk as this dirty appendage. Yeah. And weird, a weird sack of balls, which is so, so bizarre. See, you're lucky because your mom has a a mate, a companion. And so if she ever gets so sick that she needs her diaper changed and all that, you don't have to do it. If my mom gets sick, I might have to change her fucking diaper at some point. What yeah, about my stepbrother to- Jeff, my stepbrother Jeff had it. It traumatized him and he had to do it a lot. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah, I hope I never have to go through that with my I will. If it if that's what it takes, I'll do it. But I really would like to avoid that in my lifetime. Talk about full circle. I mean, that's where you came out of. Right. And now you're returning to that? Right. It's almost like those old bears who like they go they they when they know they're dying, they go up to like their birth spot in the woods and die. You crawl yeah. on your mom's cooch. <laughs> I'm not saying I would do that, but I think you would. <laughs> All right, this day in history. All right. Give me a crinkle. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, of course. 1995. O.J. Simpson, turns out, did not kill those two people. Yes, or as Norm MacDonald announced in the lead story on Weekend Update that week, it is now, it is finally official, murder, murder is, legal is legal in Los in, Angeles, California. Yeah. Um, so he was acquitted of the 1994 double murder of his uh, estranged wife, Nicole Brown Sis- Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. We'll never know how friendly they really were. In the epic 252-day trial, which, by the way, my friends, uh, Chris McGuire and Kevin Knox, sat on their couch from the beginning to the end of the day, <laughs> every day for 252 days, and watched that fucking trial. Wait, and then cr- talked Chris about McGuire, it I know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every fucking day. And it's all they talked about. Um, uh, they, it they, was amazing. They proved that his guilt had not been proved beyond a reasonable doubt. And uh, thus surmounting what the prosecution called a mountain of evidence. Uh, The Heisman Trophy star winning star running back with the Buffalo Bills and popular television personality married Nicole in 1985. He reportedly regularly abused his wife. Nothing regular about abusing your wife. And in 89 (laughs) pleaded no contest to a charge of spousal battery. In 92, she left him and filed for divorce. We all know the rest. I don't need to read you the case. Well, you know, but... you know what's interesting about him uh, pleading guilty? What? To, it was so bad he had to because all the cops worshipped him and they were his yeah. buddies. Yeah. They would come by the house, they'd pose with pictures with him. And a few times the typical thing happened where the cops are kind of told, you know, that it's just a bad fight and maybe there was some pushing or whatever it is. And but this one was so bad, even Juice couldn't get out of it. The like best she was, had a shiner. I mean, he beat her badly. He beat her badly, and uh, there was a lot of reports, unofficial accounts, that he was doing a fair amount of cocaine at this point in his life. And let's not kid ourselves. I think at this point in his life, and uh, and that the kind of st- the amount of times that they were stabbed and the severity. Indicates somebody that was on that was on drugs, and that's something that that there was there was evidence that was not presented about his drug use from the guy who sold it to him. I forget how they suppressed it, but uh, it would have been a little bit more damning. Well, damning or damning? I would hope it's damning. Okay. But um, silent N. But uh, <laughs> unlike talk the bounty hunter, who's none of his ends are silent. The um. I, Huh. The I lost my train of thought. The N word well, does that to me. The N word is where very were distracting. You, where were you during the uh, car chase, the white Bronco? I remember I was watching the Knicks game. It was during the Knicks game. I was in New York playoff I at, game. I think against Houston. Yep, I was. Wa- I was at the uh, Friars Club in New York, and I was watching it. And uh, 
It was like every the world stopped. The fucking world stopped. It was oh, uh, I know. It was one of the biggest TV moments in history. I'm surprised the Knicks and Rockets didn't stop and watch it on the sidelines <laughs> in the in the in the you know in the refs little TV. Yeah, right, right. All of them trying to look in that tent. Yeah. Um, but I remember where I was when this verdict came in, and I think I've told this story, but. It was at HBO. I worked at HBO in on-air promos, and we were all watching. You know, we watched. It was a, almost a year-long saga. And um, Eric, who's African American, uh, why did I say that? Eric, who's black, um, you know, friend of mine there, and all that. We're all watching it. We're all on the same page. How crazy it is! Verdict comes in. It is shocking, and Eric gives a little like yes, and he was standing next to me. Yeah, and I like turn him like dude, what, like, what the fuck? You know, like, and I was more like, and he knew what I was saying, which was, haven't we been on the same page this whole time of how insane this is? And he's like, it's not that. And he goes, and I mean, well, this was very, it was very teachable moment. Um, he goes, it's not that. It's finally a rich black guy gets to like skirt justice like so many rich white guys. Right. Like in other words, it was a moment where, wow, maybe the playing field has become a tiny bit, in a perverse way, a tiny bit more level. Right. Right. In the you worst can... way, where rich people can escape justice. But again, this goes back to the story we did earlier about that girl that got killed in in uh, Wyoming. Like, if it wasn't a black guy and two white victims, there's no. I mean, Grant. Well, that's not true. He was a famous athlete. Yeah. Entertainer, it no, had a yeah. lot of elements to it, but but two of those elements were he was black and they were white. That, let's not let's not kid ourselves about that. Yeah, but celebrities, you know, what's his name? Robert uh, Beretta. Robert Blake killed his wife. Yep, right. With the greatest excuse ever, I couldn't have killed her because I went back in the restaurant where I had left my gun. Yep, <laughs> right. Uh, what's his way got? What's his name got put away though? The uh, Wall of Sound music producer. Well, that's because he didn't kill his wife. He killed his girlfriend. Right. See, there's no law that allows that. Right. Yet. Uh, let's uh, do some letters yeah, to the editor. Phil Spector. Okay. Phil Spector. Let's do letters to the editor. You got it. Uh, a woman named Joanne seems to want to have sex with. Oh no, I'm sorry. Have a crush on these guys. But oh. doesn't crush mean have sex? Among the uh, African American community. Whoa! Wait, what just happened? Joanne no. wants to crush with us. No, and also kids today hook up doesn't mean intercourse. No. Yeah. Weird. Okay. Jared Morrison says that uh, love the podcast. Dutifully tune in every Sunday to listen. Quick question: Is it possible to release the podcast earlier on Sunday morning? As a father of two small children who. It, who is up at the crack every Sunday. <laughs> I find myself constantly refreshing my podcast app, looking for the Sunday papers. Usually don't see it until after 9 a.m. CST. Um, since it's clear that you record at least the day before, could it be possible for you to set it up? All right, I think the issue is, and Chris Denman, maybe you can reply to this in the Google Doc, um, they, ha they would have to wake up at the crack of dawn. I don't think they can just preset the time that it gets released. I think they have to manually do it. What about the night before? Yeah, Chris, can you do it the night before so it comes out earlier? And maybe just do the social media later? Because, Chris, what we're trying to do is super attentive dads like like this Jared guy who really want that quality time with their kids first thing in the morning. Yeah. They need to jam things in their ears to tune out their kids. Or play it on speakers and expose their kids to what the world is really all about. They know the truth about Dog the Bounty Hunter now. That's right. Uh, so we're going to work on that. Maybe we'll start getting it out a little bit earlier because we do hear that uh, pretty frequently from people that they want it out earlier. Uh, we are, by the way, the only podcast that comes out on Sunday on all of iTunes. I got an idea Apple to help podcast. everyone. We change our name to the Monday Papers. And when it comes ah. out at 9 a.m. Central Time on Sunday, mm -hmm. we can say it's early. Right. Done. This comes from uh, Tubal Kane says, please stop Mike Gibbons 
from loudly swallowing on mic. So fucking annoying. I disagree. And he did it multiple times on the 926 show. Does he mean clearing my throat because I have a disease? Oh. Because wow. I don't even think I can swallow loudly. I'd be shocked if it was swallowing. But if it is, I'm sorry. Jesus, two ball. How about I just ate half a granola bar during the Sunday papers? You sure did, and I he heard it. He didn't I say anything it. about it. Uh, we're not doing an obituary this week because nobody that we really care about died. Is that true? I looked in the obits. I didn't see anybody that compelling this week. I mean, especially coming off a of norm, I feel like obituaries better be somebody important. <laughs> or else we'll just take a couple weeks off and just keep saying norm died. Oh, man. Yeah. Still bummed about that. All right. Let's go to the Sunday funnies, which I notice is missing. One of the comic strips. Oh, boy. Should I look it up right now? Why don't you do it while I uh, read some uh, mail Sounds good about to me. the Sunday papers? I'm Andy Beach a... said, there's no doubt that physically Blondie's as hot as pen and ink gets, but your spot-on analysis of Dagwood's pathetic shortcomings have worked to expose the shortcomings of Blondie, who is clearly a spineless and damaged shell of a woman. Despite attracting the attention of much more deserving men, she's tethered herself to a hopeless, untrainable pine plank of a man. Not hot. I mean, I'd still totally fuck her, but she's oh. not the full package or cartoon wife material. Well, what are we doing? You got to understand letters something. Letters to the funnies? What are we doing here? You, yeah, we're doing letters to the funnies. You have to understand something. Blondie first came out in the 1930s. Oops. And back then, women did have to you know, marry losers to afford a fucking roof over their heads. But the thing is, Blondie hasn't changed over the years. I want to see a divorced Blondie. She's got her own catering company now. She's got her own source of income. I don't know why they both go to work, and yet she's the one at the fucking stove every night. I don't know why every weekend he's laying on the couch snoring while she's saying, hey, we got to go to the store. Why, you know, fucking leave him. Leave him already. Let's let's bring this goddamn cartoon up to the uh, 21st century. <laughs> this is what you want to see. You want to see Blondie with Hagger. Oh, shit. Hagger won't ignore her. No, he will not. Yeah. Um, what else? We had... Uh, oh, these other ones I'll read next week because we're running, we're running long here. Uh, here's a little Hagger for you. Speaking of Hagger... Um, Hagger is with his friend, Lucky, I forget his name, and he's got his sword out, and he's saying, Grr, and the king is at the door of his castle, and he says, Go away! And his friend says, I would like nothing more than to turn around and go home, but this guy will stop at nothing to get what he wants. And then the other, uh, the other barbarians say, They love working the good Viking, bad Viking routine. And when he says, Stop at nothing to get what he wants... Your child who's reading this can rest assured he's going to rape your wife. <laughs> he's saying grr like grr. I'm going to yeah. get some Viking With a pussy. very phallic, holding a very phallic sword in a very unusual way. In front of his crotch. Right. Yeah. right. Projecting out like an erection. Yeah. And same with the other guy. Look at the guy with the sword. Yeah. I know. And he's got a big, sexy smile on his face. Yeah. Oh, imagine having sex with a Viking. They march and march for days, and then they they go from city to city, sweating with under those. Pubic hair as full as yours. Oh God, they need the manscape. Oh, uh, let's man. do some lock horns. <laughs> uh, Loretta is talking to Leroy. They're at the bank, and there's three tellers behind the uh, b behind the uh, desk, and they're all laughing and looking at a check. And Loretta says, "When we get home." I'll show you how to mobile deposit your paycheck. <laughs> Poor nice. Leroy. Uh, and then you've got a family circus. Let's see. I just put it in here, and boy, was it not worth it. They're standing in front of a fountain, which looks like Old Faithful, like a geyser, but it's not. It's this fountain, and it's very high. And uh, the father and son, the shitty little son, is standing Billy. there. Billy. His name's Billy. And uh, he is talking to the dad and goes, what a gem. Daddy, 
I think I need to go to the bathroom. Hmm. And that's all, folks. Hmm. Imagine, like, look at the detail in the drawing of the waterfall. Yeah. yeah. That, like, it's the definition of a long way to go for nothing. It literally, if he would spend the time that he's drawing, thinking about what the caption will be. Like, I think he puts a day's work into drawing it and then is so late that he, on his way to the fax machine, jots a caption underneath it. Maybe he should be thinking of the punchline while he's drawing. Daddy, this is like our bidet. This is like, you know, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. It's crazy. How about some like clever joke about the money in the fountain? Right. Like, I don't know. To, to do something, even with this drawing, come up with 10 better things. Yeah. Anyway, it's so depressing. This will cheer you up. Blondie oh, in a fucking sexy ass. I went retro on this one. I went back and I found a, a Blondie from a little ways back. She's like in a slip. She's in a slip. But let me tell you something. Uh-oh. Her bust holds that slip up. It's like a... It's like a uh, 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 a bustier. What, would you, what would you call that color? It's a it's a pink. It's a rose. It's a rose colored uh, bustier. And her legs are here's but the here's the beauty of it: high heeled shoes. How would you like a wife who puts on her makeup while sitting in negligee and high heeled shoes? And Dagwood, this fucking nothing. He's got on a golf shirt and bl- the same black pants he wears every fucking day. And he says. Can you give me one good reason why I have to go to the McGoggle party? And she says, yes, I can, dear. And it has to do with my cooking you a hot dinner every evening for the rest of your life. (laughs) And then he walks away and says, do I have to shave? Do you have to shave? No, take the razor and draw it across your fucking neck. That's what you need to do. Set this woman free. Not free from the fucking McDougal party. Free from you. Oh, do I she have is, to shave? She's a catch and he doesn't know it. That's, that pretty much sums it up. That's what it should be called. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, folks. Unappreciated catch. If you want to appreciate us, we ask you to, of course, support our sponsors. Also, go to... Uh, Apple Podcasts, give us a nice rating, reviews, leave some comments. That helps us out a lot. That's what they look at. And uh, also support our our, our sponsors uh, that we manscaped. We did today. We did Simply Safe. We did um, uh, Magic Spoon. Yep. We did Stat Hero. Support oh all the sponsors. Check out Childish and Fitz Dog Radio. We got some good guests coming up. And uh, Mike, anything you want to promote? I guess Love on the Spectrum, man. Yeah, I we'll haven't. I've only seen two, I've only seen two episodes. I'm psyched to see it. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that other show we mentioned earlier. Um, and uh, don't forget the the mugs will be available. Uh, I think in just uh, two weeks, two or Wait, three weeks. Are, we haven't even picked one. I mean, now you want to get involved? Yeah. Now suddenly you want to jump in? Yeah. Okay. Well, most likely it's going to be the one that's on the wall over my shoulder, but no. uh, we're, we're going to discuss it. I don't think so. No. I don't think we should do that one. Why? I don't know. I think there are better logos that look better. Like even the, the, bis- the, the black and white one would look cool on a mug, maybe a little understated. Otherwise, they, took, is... they look too Disney-ish. Yeah. All right. Us, da- us in the in the suits looks really cool, but I'm also wondering, I don't know, maybe something more understated. Not that our okay. fans are understated, but. I mean, they spoke, Mike. They spoke. The, the vocal ones, the outgoing loud ones spoke. The more subtle ones did not speak. That's true. Yeah. But but who are the ones that buy mugs? The I guess the loud ones. mouths. Yeah. All right, we'll see. All right, listen. Uh, thanks, of course, to Chris Denman, Beth Hoops, and Key over at Midcoast Media, who do a fantastic job for us every week. We want to thank you guys again for listening. Please, if you enjoy the podcast, tell a friend. Spread the word. We're trying to grow this bad boy. 
And uh, I guess we'll just see you next week. That's what we're going to do. Take it easy. Take it easy. Sunday papers in the morning. Rarely factual. No, never boring. Greg Dagnes is to talk of masturbation. Sunday.